Hi class, in this video we want to talk about the mean and standard deviation for binomial experiments. So our lecture, this short lecture here, is only going to have one objective. We just want to compute the mean and standard deviation for a binomial random variable. Okay, so the mean or expected value, we've talked about that, and standard deviation of a binomial random variable is given by the following. And these formulas are actually incredibly easy to compute. So a binomial experiment with n independent trials and probability of success p has a mean. So notice you're only given two things. You're given the number of trials and, and the probability of success. That's it. It has a mean, which we denote as mu sub x, and standard deviation, sigma sub x, by giving the following formulas. The mean, you just take the number of trials and multiply it by the probability of success. The standard deviation, a little bit more complicated, you take the square root of n times p times 1 minus p. And that's it. And I'm going to do two examples of this for you. And then in the final example, I'll talk to you about a, a way you can use this stuff, I'll use these formulas to interpret something. OK, so we'll go back to this problem we, we've been using in the previous lecture. So according to the Experian Automotive, 35% of all car owning households have three or more cars. So right off the bat, Again, we know the probability of success here is 0 0.35 if we're counting households that have three or more cars. So in a simple random sample of 400 car owning homes, so that's the N, okay? Determine the mean and standard deviation number of car owning households that will have three or more cars. So again, you've given here the N and P. Okay, so the formula is very simple. Okay, the mean is just N times P. So you would take 400, and multiply it by 0 0.35, you get 140. So what this means is in a sample of 400, we would expect 140 to have uh, three or more cars, okay? 140 households, okay? But we realize, you know, Every time you, you do a sample of 400 carning households, you're not going to get exactly 140. So what's a measure of the spread for this? So we can get the standard deviation. So that's just the square root of n times p times 1 minus p. So that's just the square root of 400 times 0 0.35 times 1 minus 0 0.35, which would be 0 0.65, which gets you 9.54. So that's how you get the mean and standard deviation. All right, let's, let's do the LeBron James example that we had from the previous lecture, okay? So LeBron James makes free throws 80% of the time. So we know that's our probability of success. Suppose he shoots 100 free throws, okay? And we record the number that he makes. Compute the mean and standard deviation for the number of free throws LeBron James makes in 100. So the mean, mu sub x, is just n times p, well, you take 100, you multiply it by the probability of success. I think that makes sense. If he makes 80% of them, okay, and he shoots 100 free throws, we would expect him to make 80. But he's not always going to make 80. Okay, so that's why you need the standard deviation. Well, what's a measure, a reasonable measure of spread for this? So that's the square root of 100 shots times 0 0.80 times 1 minus p, well 1 minus 0 0.80 is 0 0.20. Now if you plug that in your calculator real quick, you go second function square root 100 times 0 0.80 times 0 0.20 and you get 4. Okay, so we have the mean or standard deviation. So then just uh, we could use the mean and standard deviation to answer a question like this. Would it be unusual for LeBron James to make 90 of the 100 in free throws? So what you have to do is you have to um, remember our empirical rule, okay? And what that said was that 95% of observations will fall 
within two standard deviations of the mean. Okay, so let's take our mean and subtract two standard deviations and do the same thing, take our mean and add two standard deviations. So this would be 80 minus 2 times 4 and 80 plus 2 times 4 because our mean is right here and our standard deviation was 4. So this is 80 minus 8, which would be 72, or 80 plus 8 would be 88. So 95% of the times he takes 100 shots, we would expect him to make between 72 and 88 free throws. Well, notice how the 90 is outside this. So yes, yes, it would be unusual. All right, class, I, I hope it helps seeing uh, two quick examples of this.